Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and today I'm thrilled to be talking about the fantastic movie, The Prank. We are joined today by director Maureen Baruca, along with cast members Rita Moreno, Connor Kolopsis, Ramona Young, and Kate Flannery. And Maureen, starting with you, um, I've heard you say that one of the things that you loved about directing this film in particular was being able to kind of play around with a balance of tone and something that lives in both the comedy world, the drama world, and has thriller elements to it. Um, and I was just interested in how you approached directing this film in a way that was able to play amongst all those spaces. Yeah, I mean, I think one, I love kind of playing in different tones and genres. And I think the biggest thing is grounding something in reality. So I think if you have one foot or your two feet planted on the ground and you have a kind of a basis of real, you can kind of go anywhere. That's in comedy, that's in horror, that's in thriller. So that was really important, right? That the way the movie looked, the way I talked with the actors, that there was always a truth and an honesty to it. And then we could go to kind of crazy places because you have your feet planted on the ground. So I think that that's, that's kind of my through line and how I see balancing tone. And sometimes we would play in scenes where we'd let them go more comedic or we'd pull it back, make it go scarier, pull it back. So you have the ability to kind of play and see and see what works sometimes in the moment. I love I that. I say that I loved working with Maureen. She just had all these wonderful images in her head and she's seen a lot of horror movies in, in her time. And she's seen a lot of Hitchcock and all of those wonderful masters of, of uh, ooh, ooh. and uh, she knows how to do that. And boy, I just absolutely bathed in it. I love doing it. I loved working with her. I mean, the <laughs> feeling is mutual. I mean, it's like unreal to have Rita in this movie with everybody. So, you know, when Rita steps on the set, she sets the bar and you're like, it's a different movie now. So that was one thing that was just so incredible. I love that, you know, and off the back of that for you, Rita, in terms of your performance, you're playing this character that has these villainous elements, but feels so relatable and true. We've all had those teachers and we all remember them for decades. Um, so how did you set about finding the larger scope of how to play her, but making her feel very grounded and real? I'll tell you, I used something very real in my life. I, I used uh, all of the women who had been awful to me in, in my young at the time. Uh, movie life. Uh, I call them the bitches. And uh, I use them as wonderful examples of things uh, or characteristics that they all shared. Uh, I loved using that. It was like saying, ha ha, gotcha, bitch. I loved it. She'll tell you. I made a lot of jokes on set all the time because I just, I would get an IT set. Oh, what about this? Isn't this mean? What do you think, Maureen? And I would be like, I love it. <laughs> do it. Yeah. It was always Rita being like, I love how devilish she is. <laughs> like, let's make, let's push it. Let's keep going. That's so great. And and with you, Connor, in playing your character, it feels like so much of who he is and, and his emotional landscape is rooted in his relationship with his dad who passed away a few months ago. And he has this aspiration to kind of follow in his dad's footsteps in a lot of ways. And so how did the details in the script about that relationship and conversations with Maureen really help to ground and create the character for you? Yeah, well, there's a there's a lot of pressure for him on the line, right? There's a lot of there's a lot at stake. He wants to get into this college that his his dad went in, uh, and Ramona, his best friend, uh, all when his uh, plan gets uh, almost destroyed by the Rita Moreno, uh, mm -hmm. we try to frame her for murder. <laughs> Go ahead, Ramona, speak up, woman. And we loved it. We loved every we loved second it. of it. We loved every <laughs> second of it, you know. Yeah, you better say that. <laughs> Ramona, I, I think I Ramona's it. hilarious in this. You know, let's not forget that there's an element. We keep talking about the horror and the fright and all that. It's a funny movie. You know, it, I call this a little cult, a little, because we were low budget, I suppose, a little cult movie. I saw it once. My daughter and I saw it once, but not without trepidation. We saw a screening. Maureen was there, and of course, our Stephen Wolf, our producer. And I laughed a lot. I mean, I just was my own best audience. <laughs> you did. You're like, I love that shot. I love the score. Like, I, I think, again, being such a movie fan, I think that you, you yeah, pick out those right. things that you really love. Uh huh. It was great fun. 
That's so wonderful. And, and Ramona, in talking a little bit more about your character, I love your journey of auditioning um, because the script originally had written Tanner as a male character and Maureen saw there being real potential in, you know, having this beautiful platonic friendship. Um, and so when you were auditioning, given that the idea of who the character was became a malleable entity, how did that kind of open up the space in which you felt like you could play around with who she was going to be for you? Um, I mean, I just really trusted the script and I trusted Maureen and my cast and I just worked off like the atmosphere and I felt like everyone like treated me with such like kindness and grace. Like I, I had a lot of fun just being free and playing around with the character because everyone else did. Oh, you made me, yeah. you made me giggle a lot. <laughs> and you played, you played the kind of Valley girl that I despise. Buys. Oh, thank you. So and, much. And, they, <laughs> and you did it so well. It was you were just delicious. As soon as we yeah, Connor, as... you were pretty good too. <laughs> so I was okay. <laughs> no, it was as soon as Ramona's tape came in, it was there was it was clear that there was only one choice, and it was Ramona. And what was so great was, yeah, we never get to see platonic best friends. Like I have many guy friends growing up in high school that I never had a crush on. <laughs> um and so I thought they had such great chemistry together. As soon as you see Ramona and Connor together, it was instant that they were friends. And, you know, I had them go off and make a song together. Um, and that was kind of the thing that they did before we started the movie. So they really had that kind of real friendship kind of built and baked in when we started shooting. Why did they have to do a song together? I'm just they curious. They did it in the movie. So I wanted I know. Them to actually create a song in real life together. Did you guys? Did you do yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, we created the song that's that's in the film. Yeah, it's oh, an incredible. But you song. made it up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. That's terrific. It was Thank really you. a terrible song. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say really quickly, I when we were talking about Ramona's character, I think because Kate and Rita are here, some of the best dynamics not only come I mean, it wasn't just the relationship between me and me and Ramona's character, but I love the 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 villain, the villain between you, Rita and and Kate. Oh yeah. Yeah, right. some of my favorite oh. scenes are Ramona and Kate in the the lunch line. Like, yeah, just that they're head to head, like the respect and kind of animosity at the same time. I think it's really mm -hmm. fun how you guys played it. And, and, speaking and Kate, you were pretty funny too. I mean, oh, I just I laughed a lot watching this film. I really did. I didn't expect to, and that was one of the happy surprises. I mean, the, the some of the my character is so absurd. And yet she's very real. She's everybody you've ever hated once in yeah. your life in school. Kate, I do not mean to interrupt. I just do that because I have, I run off at the mouth. Please say something. Please <laughs> run off at the mouth. The more, I mean, it's literally, you are the fountain of youth, the fountain of, of knowledge and comedy. And you, you are, you are, you're incredible. I mean, there is, there's nobody like you and you're still doing it and yeah. killing it. Awesome. You're amazing. And I'm so honored to be in this movie with you. Thank you. But yeah, you. I had a great time. I have to tell you, uh, uh, it's so great playing the power dynamic of the high school student and the lunch lady. It's kind of like the alcoholic and the bartender. I mean, there's a lot of power. I just got to tell you, I'm the gatekeeper. I was playing the gatekeeper. And, uh, you know, it's uh, this movie is so fun and there's something for everybody. I feel like it's kind of like the Long Island iced tea of movies. Because there's comedy, more. it's just all in there, and you're just going to have a great time. You're going to feel great afterwards. So it doesn't matter what's in it. And you will laugh. You will. You. I mean, you just will. It's just, it's some of it, it's, it's, it's so absurd in terms of the characters. I mean, I'm the kind of woman in, in this movie who keeps taking the principal's favorite parking spot. And she's, she's so mean. <laughs> oh, she's so. There is a real lesson in how much, like how much you can encroach yeah. before it just like tips somebody over the edge. Right, <laughs> right. It's brilliant. And, and speaking of the, the comedic aspect of your performance, Kate, I love the kind of acerbic dryness to your delivery in those scenes as well. So how did you land upon that being the specific comedic delivery that you wanted to play with? Well, uh, Maureen Baruch and I had worked together on another movie uh, called uh, Golden Arm a few years ago, and uh, I totally trust Maureen. She just, she is, she's a great director, but she's also just a great human being. And I feel like um, sometimes when women are on sets, we're sort of, yeah, I don't know, there's, there's, 
there's less care. I mean, I don't know, or or less um less attention in a way, uh, unless you're a former model. So it's nice to be with uh with the director who sees everybody. That's wonderful. And and Connor and Ramona, in, in coming back to talking about the song that you know, the two of you developed for the film. Um, you know, I love that that was kind of how you worked on building your chemistry together as well, because of getting to do that before going into production. Um, and so what was that creative process of, of figuring out who are these characters going to be and delivering a musical number in the middle of the sports field that is kind of intentionally not great, but something that they love? Yeah, well, we met, all, I think, like three days before shooting, too. So to to play, you know, long, like lifelong friends that, you know, yeah, we had to build that chemistry. We were just hanging out, getting to know each other, trying to figure this song thing out. And then Connor was just like, do you like pineapples on pizza? And I was like, hell no. And then that was. That and then was that's the, song. the genesis that's of the song. Yeah. <laughs> that's marvelous. And Maureen, I love your ability to kind of also in, in the comedic space, create visual jokes. So that moment when they're performing on the sports field and then you cut to some of the people in the stands and you realize they can't even hear what's being performed down below. It's such a great moment. And so how did you set about coming up with moments like that where it's like visually we can enhance the joke by doing this? I think like my approach to that is actually also my approach to like casting, right? Where you know, you have all these people in this movie that are incredible, but letting everybody do that's something that's a little surprising or like different than you would think. So I think that even comes as far as like how you do a visual joke, right? Where you're like, oh, we're, we're so much in the song and then you pop wide and you like, it kind of takes you out of it for a second. So hopefully there's that laugh. There's another moment in the movie later where it's a very scary moment. And again, it pops to like a real hard comedy beat. And so I think sometimes it is you know, a risk, but you're like, let's try it out and see if it works. And I think so much of that is trusting people's ability to be in both spaces. And I think that is what I was trying to do in this movie as far as taking real comedic people and then also having them play kind of scary as well. Because I think that that is on the same, it's on the same line. So you're always like kind of walk, walking a tightrope with that. And you know, that that, that makes me think of something uh, that you did in the, in the writing that I love. This teacher... <laughs> This teacher wears black leather gloves in class all the time. And at po one point she doesn't. And you wonder what happened? Because all the kids make fun of that. And they think she must have claws. And they make up all kinds of reasons why she wears black leather gloves. And, you know, it's like a, what do they call those things? That just, it's a red herring. It's a red herring. Yeah. But it's a fun herring. But it's, right, it's a I think good fish. It's like saying like, oh, I just do it to, you know, mess with people. Like, that's the thing. It's like, <laughs> how much how much will you encroach on someone's space to push them? Or what's the cost of revenge? You know? And also, and can I bring something up? Since I remembered this, that it, it, it so impressed me. At one point in her uh, physics class, she does an experiment with Connor's character with a bowling ball. And you told me that your brother, who is very good in math, physics and math, yes, he's in suggested, the movie as well. yeah. suggest to tell them because it's well, a great story. Originally, Mrs. Wheeler was a home ex teacher. Yeah. And so that was one of the things that I thought would be kind of fun. And that was based on my brother, Ahmed, who's in the movie. He plays one of the teachers. Uh, he always does comedy punch-ups for me. He was he took physics and was a science major, even though he became a comedian. So he said some of his most scary experiments in class were in physics. So we're like, oh, let's make her a physics teacher and use the bowling ball pendulum effect, you know, where you pop balloons or you use flame. So like, oh, let's have that be part of the element of like her teaching and what she scares students into. And that was a pitch from my brother. Like, oh, you, she should be a physics teacher. But it's a for real because I always make a point of saying that is a for real exercise in the in the physics class yeah it's not uh, it's not invented no that's the yeah the pendulum effect of and it's very scary because you know you have the bowling ball on a string and there's his face and the, what you can see in terms of the camera is the ball and his face so then the teacher mrs wheeler lets go of the ball and you can watch this poor boy just sweating bullets <laughs> Because this thing is coming right at him and very quickly and very heavy. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sweating what happens. And, and, and Rita's standing over there with the bowling ball in her hands with a huge smile on her face, ready to go. <laughs> evil, evil smile. And, and Connor, for you as well, I mean, you're, you're playing this character who 
is just, you know, a ball of anxiety to begin with, but he has like systems and ways of creating order in the world for himself. If I print five copies of my essay, it doesn't matter if something happens to one of them. And he's the one that doesn't want to participate in the prank. You know, even just the idea of it stresses him out. Um, and so how did you kind of find the way that you wanted to play around with? How does he respond to everything just being so completely out of control as it goes beyond even just being about the students and becoming a news item? Yeah, well, I mean, look, I've been there. I've been there with mass amounts of schoolwork, knowing that you need to get stuff done and something out of your control <clears throat> renders you unable to 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 finish them, right? Um, and so I just think, you know, channeling that that anxiety of having five backups and the plan still going wrong because of your own best friend. Um, and then, you know, me and Ramona get to share a fun scene that that we get to to play with Maureen um on where we have a big moment of conflict, but 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 it was good. Connor's aim as the character in this movie is really to be perfect. Yeah. He wants to be the perfect boy. And he's obviously also an extremely bright student. So uh, needless to say, if he's that all bright, the teacher, she's going to hate him. Yeah. <laughs> she's just going to. And I do love that her motivation, right, is like thinking that this is preparing her students for life. Like <laughs> these are the lessons that you have to learn. Like you have to be tough as nails. You have to toughen people up. So I, I mean, I my had my seventh grade teacher, Mrs. Jordan, was my Mrs. Wheeler, and so I I love that how you play that right, where it is just like, of course, this I'm helping them. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So the name of the movie, the prank, has a very specific meaning because the students hate her so much they decide to involve themselves in a prank that uh, that villainizes or villainizes. Is that yeah, such I mean, the word her. But it turns into something else, and that's what gets creepy. I love it. And and Ramona as well, I, I love that you get to play a character who on the surface is, is the opposite of her best friend, that she comes across as very confident in the world and kind of like, it's okay, things will work out or they won't and either is fine, except it actually feels like under the surface, that's her way of just navigating the world and, and coping in her own way. Um, and so what was the fun in kind of the exterior, the, the exterior, which is so confident, but also looking at the fragility underneath her? Yeah, I mean, the character was just very well created. You, I mean, I think all of us play yeah. characters with multiple layers, which is fun to like look into. <laughs> oh, whoa, that's so, oh, that's I, so mine funny. doesn't do that. Um, but yeah, I think everyone has their insecurities and it comes out in different ways. Some people like are more earnest about it and some people hide it with like a facade of confidence, which Tanner does. Definitely. And and Kate, and coming back to you, um, it sounds like Maureen really created a space where you were able to come to the foreground with ideas for your character, ideas for kind of how you wanted to play around with your performance. And how does that just open up the experience of making a film when you have a director like that, who knows that if I cast the right people, then they're going to bring just as much to the table in terms of ideas? Well, that sense of trust is so important. And I, I have to say, you know, after nine seasons on The Office, I feel like I learned a very specific relationship to the camera because we were shooting a documentary, a fake documentary. Um, so I always have to be reminded like, oh, I can I can get out of that space. I, so uh, Maureen just was a great little nudger and just reminding me. Um, but But, you know, when things are already laid out, you just walk the path. I mean, she laid the bricks. She put down a carpet. She hired a brass band. Just take a couple steps, and and it seems like I'm doing something more important than I than I do. But but that's that's the beauty of a great ensemble and a great project. And you know, the thing about indie films, you have to be willing to take out the trash. You can't be a diva. Everybody has to be in this together. And uh, Maureen just creates a great energy on on set. And it was just so great working with Ramona and Connor. And this is this whole thing's been a joy. And I have to say, too, I mean, Kate is like we had done Golden Arm before. So even just asking Kate to I mean, Kate's always down to play. So, I mean, Kate is one of my forever muses and like everything I do, Kate has to be in because, yeah, you just ask her to show up. And I love, like again, the surprise of like how she will deliver something. It's just really fun to see how she'll play in the space and like working on that together. So Kate's always down to just come and have fun. So also Maureen, probably because uh of her connection with Jimmy Kimmel, emotionally at least, has this crazy sense of humor. And uh, she comes up with scenes that, uh, you know, improvisations. 
that are so much fun. The teacher's lounge, I think. Was- oh, the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of stuff I, on the cutting room floor. From I <laughs> have such a funny. I got. Can I do yeah. one line? Yeah. Okay. So she, this terrible woman comes into the teacher's lounge and everybody right away freezes. And the first thing she says to someone who's there, who's got fuzzy that's kind my brother. of hair. Oh, that's Ahmed, brother. Ahmed Baruka, right. yeah. Right. <laughs> that was his The pitch. first thing she says to him is, oh my God, you've got a spitball in your hair. <laughs> this is how she is. And that was Ahmed's pitch. He's like, how, can I put spitballs in my was hair? Was that him? Yeah. Oh, God. So again, that was another joke. And that was really Ahmed. hard for me. That's one of the times when I almost peed myself. <laughs> It wow. just struck me as so funny that she would recognize a spitball to begin with. <laughs> yeah, with yeah, Ahmed and Betsy Sadaro were the two teachers in the lounge <laughs> that just you had so much fun. <laughs> and coming back to you both, Connor and Ramona, you know, we, we were touching a little bit before about the scene where your two characters suddenly have a fight. And I love scenes like that because it actually tells you so much about these characters because there's always truth in the things that you say in an argument. Um, you know, and also they both know exactly how to push each other's buttons to get specific reactions. And so what was the experience in playing around with the history of their friendship in a scene like that? I mean, to be honest, we we shot the scene as written like once or twice but then Maureen was just like speaking of improvisation yeah Maureen was just like just you you get the scene get nasty just get nasty say whatever you want to say yeah yeah Maureen has this way of giving I mean look being the youngest youngest actor of the the cast you have all these talented people and Maureen gives them a platform to really improvise and it kind of lets me feel a little bit less pressured and have a little bit more fun and start playing around a little more. And so when we got to that scene, which was to let the tail end of filming, it was at a point me and Ramona were pretty comfortable. We, we've been doing this for, for a few weeks at the time. And then it was just we got to hash it out. We got to be nasty to each other. And, and Rita, it feels like your character, Mrs. Wheeler, she puts so much pressure on her students, but there's also that moment where she's basically saying, if I allow a cheater to succeed, then I failed myself as well. And so did you also view her as putting immense pressure on herself the same way that she does on them? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But also, uh, it's very important for her to always assume that she's right. She's a very righteous woman. And uh, but the fun part of it is that, uh, you know, when you see her with her husband, she's wearing leather, for God's sake. <laughs> Which was my idea, of course, but you know, who, this woman's wearing leather. Her husband loves to be on a motorcycle. It's it's very weird. <laughs> I love that everybody does have their own weird moral compass, right? Everybody kind of has their own morality throughout the movie, whether that's pulling a prank or being hard on her students or being the gatekeeper or you know Keith David's principal. You know, I think that that's one really fun thing that everybody gets to play in a different way. And I, I love when I get to be really evil. And I mean, she is really evil. I just thrived. <laughs> you know, I must have been something in another life. I mean, I, I loved it. Or I'm making up for something <laughs> from another life. I enjoy it immensely. <laughs> Well, I really, really loved the film and everything that you've all brought to the table in it. So congratulations on a fantastic movie. I'm so glad it was a wonderful experience. And thank you so much. Thank Thank you. you. We're so glad you enjoyed it. Thank you.